Hello, everybody. Ray Pedrasa of the McAllen Cable Network. Many of you are probably still cleaning up after the storm. A lot of the big trees uh, in your yards probably got toppled around just a bit and damaged. And uh, before you get to cutting, we should probably talk about the do's and don'ts of uh, how to cut your trees. Joining me right now is Mark Crozier. He's our urban forester for the city of McAllen. Uh, Mark, thank you for joining us. Yes, sir. A couple of things I want to make clear. On these trees that are actually still standing, these are the trees that actually survived. You know, because these trees went through Dolly, they went through this big storm we had right now. So we don't want to go ahead and overreact and cut down these trees needlessly. So we want to make sure we're cutting down the right branches, the right trees that are actually damaged. First thing we're going to look for are, cr are cracked and broken branches. Those are going to be very, very obvious. What they're going to do is they're going to be hanging down to the ground. They're going to look kind of ripped, and we're going to want to we're going to want to cut those back to the stem. So when you cut it back to the stem, the tree will be able to, to seal over that wound and heal over it much sooner. If you leave it exposed, you have a broken branch like a foot long, it's a stub, it's going to take much longer for it to heal. You're going to get ants, insects inside that wound, and it's going to stay there for several, several years. So if you cut it right, do it the first time, it's going to heal over quicker, you're going to have a much better tree. So in the next storm, hopefully you won't have as much damage as this one. So basically you're saying don't get carried away with a saw, and, and the goal is to save the tree. The goal is to save the tree and to keep shade for the summer. Because we're coming into May, June, July, and August, we're going to need those leaves for us for you know to, to uh, keep us cooler. Because cause right now in these neighborhoods, they look completely different. I mean, we lost we lost our leaves. We didn't lose the trees. All of the, all the leaves are in the street, but more than likely they're going to come back. They're going to come back for when we need them. All right, real quickly, we have two trees to show uh, people that uh, uh, the do's and don'ts. Uh, we have one right behind you, right? Yes, uh, here we have a uh, Palo Blanco. This, this tree, um, uh, we're going to look at the tree actually on the city right-of-way. We're going to look at that tree. The uh, tree on the fence, you can see it's leaning severely. That tree is not on city property. It is a tree that would be recommended for removal because it is leaning. It is growing on a fence. It is a Palo Blanco. All those three things make it likely that it's going to fall into the street or into the alley or, or, or under your house. But the tree we're going to look at is a tree right on the right of way, nice, tall, and straight. It's already survived the storm, but it has several broken branches. We're going to want to go ahead right now and trim those branches so we make it, make it better for the summer. Okay, got it. And right here behind me, we have another tree that has uh, twisted branches. And so what will we do about that one? It's going to be very similar. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first uh, cut that branch off. And before you cut, make sure you're not hitting power lines, insects. Make sure there's no one below the tree. Make sure safety comes first because nobody got... Um, killed during this storm and we don't want anyone to get killed in the cleanup, you know, by cutting their hand or, or having a tree fall on them. So we want to make sure we're doing it safe. All right. And if they're using a chainsaw, they need to cut from the top and not the bottom. Is that what you recommend? Uh, on, on, on the uh, uh, chainsaw, the first cut is always on the bottom. You always want to cut on the bottom and you want to come through on the top. And if you do it that way, what you're going to avoid is having the uh, saw get stuck and get pinched and then you have to pull it out and get close to the tree and have it fall on you. Um, and then, and then also if the uh, tree is actually falling on the ground, you're going to want to cut all the branches that, that don't have pressure on them because the, when the tree falls on the ground, there's going to be one main branch that's going to hold the tree up. Cut all the other branches off first before you cut that one because if you cut that one first, the tree is going to fall right away. So cut all the weight off of it and then cut the branch that all the pressure is on. All right, and of course, if somebody has questions about uh, how to cut a tree or if they have questions about how exactly they should trim their tree, they can uh, call you and you'll be more than happy yeah. to take their call. It is, it is a quite a uh, uh, quite a hectic time right now so call into the McAllen Recycling Center we will make a work order up and and on a uh, first come first serve basis we will get out there and look at them basic message just be careful and don't get carried away cutting right exactly be safe and do not overreact um, make sure we keep those trees there for the summer we're gonna need them all right Mark Crosey thank you so much for joining us all right and thank you for watching I'm Ray Pedras and this is the McAllen Cable Network